Hey, what is going on, all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. For as long as human beings have been on this earth, we've given names to our offspring, our stuffed animals, our pets, the places that we live, as well as our things, including the vehicles that we use to get around. In the old days, ships were given just one simple name. Now, modern day ships not only have a name, but also a registry number or a unique whole number of some sort. NCC 1701C, USS Enterprise. Airplanes are identified by an N number on their tails, usually. When purchased by an airline, the airlines usually give them an additional set of fleet numbers, usually a two to three digit number, so that they can recognize all the different aircrafts that they have in their fleet with ease, instead of using the long in tail numbers. On top of those two numbers, dispatch also assigns a flight number so that air traffic controllers can recognize them in the air and know where they're going and what they're hauling. This usually helps passengers as well to know which plane we want to get on so that we don't end up somewhere that we didn't intend on going to. If these sensors are working, we're over 70,000 light years from where we were. We're on the other side of the galaxy. But what about buses? Well, if you look closely, depending on what type of bus it is and what kind of jobs that it does, buses have all kinds of different numbers and identifiers all over them. Today, we're gonna take a look at just what all these numbers mean as well as how they get them. Just like personally owned vehicles, all buses have their own VIN numbers. They're typically 17 characters long and they're a sign when they're being built in the factory. And they are unique to that vehicle and that vehicle only. But when they're purchased by a company, the company purchasing them have to slap on a few more identifiers before they can send them out for passenger service. In North America, the first set of numbers will be the license plate number. Just like buying your own car, you'll need to get a license plate for your bus. But not just any type of license plate. You'll need to get a specialized passenger carrying license plate, and there are lots to choose from. From PT plates for vehicles with a capacity of up to and including nine seats to apportioned plates, which are required for vehicles operating in two or more states or regions and weighing over 26,000 pounds. Now there's a lot to research when choosing what type of license plate you should get for your bus. But since this video isn't about license plates, I'm not gonna talk too much about uh, all the different types. But if you guys are interested in a video just about the different types of commercial plates in North America, let me know down in the comments below. It might be worth doing something there. So now let's say you got your license plate ordeal taken care of. Well, what else? Well, if you operate a motor coach and you plan on taking it across state lines, you will now need to register for a DOT number. And depending on what state you operate out of, you may also need to register for an MC number, which actually used to be called an ICC number. Every commercial truck or coach bus will usually have this number as well as the name of the company they operate for, either painted or decaled somewhere on the side of the vehicle. These numbers are assigned to your company by the U.S. Department of Transportation. They're unique to the company and is used by the Department of Transportation, or DOT, as well as the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, or FMCSA, to look up your company's information and determine whether or not you are in compliance. Basically, it's a number for them to check your report card. Whether you own one bus or 100 buses, you will need to obtain these numbers before you start transporting any passengers. Okay, now that we got all the boring and legal stuff out of the way, an owner of a commercial coach bus will have the option to give his or her bus a fleet number, or in some cases, a fleet name. In my opinion, this is the best part about getting a vehicle, when you get to actually name it or number it. This is basically what you want to call your coach bus. Now, I'm not aware of any laws or regulations that says an owner of a coach bus has to give his or her coach bus a fleet identifier. Now, if I'm wrong on this, someone, please correct me down in the comments below. If you are a one bus operation, I guess you really don't need to give your bus any kind of identifier. I mean, unless you really want to. For those who own or operate or manage a fleet of two or more buses, if you don't have a way to identify your buses, it could get confusing when you need to assign them to your drivers or if your diesel techs need to go and fix one of them. Then it comes in real handy if you have a way to refer to your buses in your fleet. 
For Peoria Charter, the company that I work for, all of our coaches are identified with a three-digit number and they all start with a two. On our smaller vehicles like passenger carrying transits or our minivans, they're usually given a single or double digit number. Now, if you happen to stumble on some pictures of our buses from way back in the day, they were once numbered quite differently. Uh, they had four digits and the first two digits denoted the actual year of when the vehicle was built. Now, in the making of this video, I asked Bill Winkler, the president of Peoria Charter, as well as the third generation of the Winkler family to take over the business, why our buses today start with a number two. I mean, I always assumed that Bill's father, Roger Winkler, changed the fleet from the four digit numbers to the three digit numbers that now start with the twos because when he took over Peoria Charter, Roger was the second generation of the Winkler family to run the company, hence the letter two. But that, however, was not the case. Bill actually called Roger Winkler, his father, to ask him the real reason. And Roger replied that his father, Walter Winkler, the founder of Peoria Charter, made the change because the four-digit fleet numbers that denoted the year of when the vehicle was made were causing problems because at some point, his clients and passengers figured it out and started complaining when they realized they were on an older bus. Lesson learned right there. Well, Roger said that his father, Walt Winkler, chose to start each bus with the number two after that because, well, two just happened to be his favorite number. Now, when it comes to other privately owned motor coach companies, choosing their fleet numbers is completely up to them. Some buses are numbered by their owners based on the sequence of their purchase. Now, I've actually seen some companies that number their buses based on the size of the vehicle with the number four denoting that they are 40 to 45 feet long and they're smaller vehicles starting with the number one. Now, despite whatever number a bus is assigned by the owners of the company, some buses are given unofficial names by the drivers that drive them or the company employees that interact or work on them, sometimes due to their quirks or characteristics. Now, you may ask, Instead of giving them fleet numbers, why not just use their original VIN numbers? I mean, they're already unique and they're already there. And I will say, there are times when I'm selling one of our buses or dealing with banks and appraisers, the fleet numbers that we assign to our buses mean absolutely nothing to them. All they want are the actual VIN numbers. But I gotta say, that would be absolute hell on drivers, dispatchers, and technicians if all we used were the VIN numbers. It's so much easier to say, Hey, Bob, you're driving 203 today. 270 has to go in the shop. Can you imagine using a VIN number in this situation? Hey, Leon, I'm putting you in E2XC81B6K3081419 today. Your other bus 2PCH33490PC721362 is in the shop. Which bus? Yeah. That's gonna cause some delays. Now, one of my favorite examples is Lewis Coaches Incorporated out of New Orleans. They identify their coaches with the two letters LC, which I'm assuming stands for Lewis Coach, followed by a dash, and then a two-digit number. On top of that, they also seem to give each of their coaches a name as well. Like this one, LC17, which apparently is also known as Princess Arabella. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's really cool that they actually give their coach buses names. Let's make sure that history never forgets the name Enterprise. Okay, if that wasn't enough numbers on a bus, well, there are situations where there could be even more. I mean, some of these buses have more numbers than a Hong Kong phone book. What the hell you say? You know, I'm not sure why I used Hong Kong for that example. Population density, maybe? Well, anyway, when it comes to motor coaches that operate line runs like Greyhound and Megabus or even city transit buses, there are even more numbers that they have to worry about. Well, if you're a passenger waiting for your bus to arrive, you probably won't even notice or care about any of the numbers or identifiers that I've mentioned so far in this video. The numbers and identifiers that the passengers are really focused on will be the destination marquees. They're usually illuminated and have a route number or name that define the route that this bus travels on. In Urbana, Illinois, the town that I live in, the local city transit agency known as MTD uses names of colors that show 
what route the bus is operating. And speaking of MTD, their buses actually use a four digit identifier for their fleet number and the first two numbers of that four digit number actually denote the year that the vehicle was made. I wonder if they ever get any complaints from bus riders that's figured out their numbering system and realize that their bus was kind of an old one. Some city transit buses have an additional illuminated sign on the bottom of the passenger side windshield like the CTA buses in Chicago. Now, someone once told me that this was the run number, or some of them show the bus driver's operator number on this little sign. So I guess bus drivers get their own unique numbers too? Uh, I don't know. But honestly, I looked all over the place on the internet and I couldn't find any info on what that little display uh, actually indicates. And it might be different uh, between different um, municipal transit agencies. Now, if any of you city bus operators or aficionados that are watching could let me know what that sign actually displays down in the comments below, I would be most grateful. And finally, when it comes to school buses, most of them that I've ever ridden on as a kid, as well as seen operating, have a simple two digit number on the side. And that number functions as the fleet number, as well as the route number for all the kids that are boarding the bus. In larger cities, I've seen school buses with three or four digit numbers, as well as some with no numbers at all. I guess it depends on who owns them and what they're used for. Now, if you guys have a special name for your bus that you drive, or if you know the lore of why certain bus companies number their buses in a certain way, please, I would love to read all about it. Put it down in the comments below. I absolutely love reading some of the stories that you guys write down in the comments, and I really appreciate you guys taking the time to do so. It's probably one of my favorite things about making these videos, reading the stories and replies that you guys write. Now, before I end today's video, I wanna give a quick shout out to an old friend that I learned a lot of life experience and street smarts from since I was just a lad. His name is Doug de Blasio, and we used to work together at a Home Depot way back in my college days. Well, Doug is now a realtor down in Florida. He just started a YouTube channel that's filled with great information about realty. Now, if any of you are thinking about buying a house down in sunny Florida, definitely check out my buddy Doug's channel and reach out to him for more info. He could really help you out. I'll put the link of his YouTube channel down in the description box below, as well as a pop-up here somewhere. Well, folks, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And as always, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.